more abundant and free so turn your eyes upon Chapter 4 we hear. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus 
your cross as you wait for the crown Tell the world of the treasure you found Jesus is calling With your heads bowed and your eyes closed today I would invite you to come to the altar would invite you to come to the altar that is at the feet of our Savior Jesus. And this call to bear our cross while we wait for our crown is exactly where we find ourselves in our walk today. That great tension between the already coming kingdom and the kingdom that is not yet fully here. We find ourselves in the midst, in the in-between time where we still struggle and we still suffer and there are some among us today who are dealing with burdens too heavy. There are many of us here today who are carrying a weight that is more than we can bear by ourselves. So I would invite you this morning in the midst of this journey, in the midst of the, the cross that you are bearing, in the midst of your weight for the crown and in response to this call that we have heard this morning already to, to come to the altar, I would invite you to do so today. If it's not normally your practice and normally you just, you just sit where you are, I would invite you today to, to come to these altars or come and kneel at the front row or even kneel where you are today and make sure that God knows that you are not just spiritually and emotionally involved in what's happening today, but that you literally come to him and that you kneel before him and that you physically are involved in the process of yielding your burdens, your pain, your suffering, your difficulty, and even the weight that you are bearing for others today, that he might be able to help you carry your cross. I would invite you to do that. I'd invite you to come to the altar to your right this morning and be anointed with oil if you'd like or support someone else who has come here today. I'd invite you to come to the altar to your left and just lay your burdens down today. Those, those crosses that you may be bearing, your, your need for God to heal you and deliver you from whatever it is that you're, you're bearing today. I would invite you to do that. I'd invite you to kneel where you are if you'd like to do that. Or move about the sanctuary and go and pray with someone else today. This is our special time of family prayer. It's an important time for us here at Knoll Avenue. And if you're here for the first time, we'd love to just envelop you and, and allow you to be a part of this very sacred time for us today. But let's enter into our time of prayer in just this moment as a family before our Father, crying out to Him to help us bear our cross as we wait for our crown. Lord, thank you today for those that have gathered here at your altar, and for those that have gathered here in your sanctuary to, to bear one another's burdens today. We didn't just come here because it's part of our duty. We didn't just come here today because it's just another box to check off. We came here today to worship you, Father. We came here to bask in the presence of your son, Jesus, and we came here to be affected and moved and changed and transformed by the work of your spirit. And we pray that already today our songs have risen to Jesus, our high priest, and that he has taken our meager offerings and, and is beginning and continuing to hand them to you as perfected worship. Father, we ask this today because we know that our offerings in and of themselves are very poor and impoverished. But when we come to you and we offer you our humble worship, and we give you that worship through our beautiful and blessed Savior, our high priest Jesus himself, then you hear our prayers and you hear our, you hear our songs. They are rising just now to our high priest Jesus. Jesus, we pray that you will take those prayers and we pray that you'll take our songs and we pray that you'll, you'll take our message that we hear today and, and you'll make all of them beautiful in the presence of our loving Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you especially for hearing the prayers for healing this morning. 
Thank you for hearing the prayers that are rising from your altars this morning and from the places where we're seated and, and kneeling today and hearing the prayers of those who are appealing to you to, to deliver them from things that are too big for them. Lord, we pray especially again today for all of our brothers and sisters in our congregation who've, who have recently recognized their affliction with cancer and other diseases that are they're simply beyond their ability to heal on their own. We think especially today of Don Ruby and we ask that you'll continue to, to heal her and give her strength. We pray for Sandy and for Brian that you'll continue to, to help them in their battle with cancer. We pray that you'll continue to, to be with the Kosar family as they heal from losing a brother, a father, a husband, a friend. Lord, we miss Jim, but we know that, that he is with you. We pray for Freedom Mail's family, Lord, that has also recently lost a mother and a, a sister and a friend. And we pray that you'll be with their family as well. There's a heaviness that sits on all of us as we walk through this life, Lord. We are, we are still very much in the midst of this battle, in the midst of, of a sin and war and hate-filled world. But we believe that you truly are the king. And we believe that you are bringing healing even now and bringing hope even now. And God, I hope that today, even in the midst of this time of prayer and this time of heaviness as we offer you our burdens, that we will realize that the church is one of the most important signs of the hope of the world that there, that there is in our world today. The church is the place where the remnant exists. The church is the place where the spirit dwells. The, the church and your people in particular are the place where love begins to, to break through all of the hate and hopelessness and despair that is in the world. <coughs> Help us to take our role as the church in the world seriously. But I also pray that you'll help us to take the privilege that it is for us to be the church seriously. We are the hope of the world because we are the hands and feet of your son and our savior Jesus. So as you continue to hear our prayers this morning and as you offer hope and healing, as you offer help, as you offer your closeness, as you hold us in your arms this morning, I pray that you will embolden us as we hear the message this morning that Pastor Kalezi has for us. I pray that you will embolden us with the, the reminder that we sit even today in the shadow of the cross that is now empty. I pray that you will embolden us with the reality that the tomb that once held you, Jesus, for those three days is no longer full but is empty. I pray that you will remind us that we dwell in resurrection power. I pray that you'll remind us that we have come up out of the waters of baptism and we are the church in the world that holds out hope for the hopeless holds up light for those stumbling in the darkness. Remind us of who we are and help us to treasure not just the possessions that you've placed in our hands, but the hope that makes those treasures very small in comparison. You have given us so much. You have blessed us so that we might be a blessing. We thank you for hearing our prayers today. We thank you for answering prayers even this week and we, we look forward to and long to see the way that you will answer our prayers this coming week. And we pray now that you will hear us in voices triumphant as the church gathers together and prays in one voice the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Ushers, if you'd come forward and receive our tithes and offerings. We've mentioned already that this is our faith promise emphasis, and there will be much more about that over the next couple of weeks. We'd love for you to participate in that. And as the ushers are coming forward and receiving our tithes and offerings, I want to let you know that, that every year, as a part of our faith promise fundraising, uh, we anticipate being able to give a portion of what we raise uh, to one of our favorite ministries here in town and, and a ministry that we have devoted a lot of time and attention to over the years, a ministry that we believe in strongly and a ministry that we want to continue to see succeed, and that is the Kansas City Rescue Mission. So as you give to Faith Promise and as you make your pledge for Faith Promise, um, I hope you'll know that that is an important part of, of, um, of that process for us to be able to raise above and beyond what we need to be able to give to others. And one of our favorite others is the Kansas City Rescue Mission. Joe Calazzi has been at the Kansas City Rescue Mission for a number of years. I'm not even sure how long. I'm sure he'll tell us this morning. But uh, I think he's only in his maybe late 40s, but he's planning on retiring soon. So I'm not sure what that's about, but he's going to talk to us uh, today about that and many other things. Joe will be retiring in uh, 2020, so just another year and a half or so, and we're excited to see what God will lead the Kansas City Rescue Mission to do next, but we will miss your, your leadership, brother, and so we're excited that he's here today. I know many of you have heard him speak a number of times, and he was faithful to help us during our pastoral interim here a number of times as well. Pastor Joe, come and preach to us, and we're excited that you're here today. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Well, good morning. It is a privilege. It's always a privilege to be at Knoll. Um, I got to say thank you to Knoll because you guys, you guys are invested. You, you, some of you know that, probably all of you know that, but... I don't know that there is another church as invested as you are, believe it. Um, I want to thank you for, do we have a few slides here, for, from, on behalf of all these men who wander up to our door on a daily basis, and the women who come next at our Women's Center, on their behalf, I want to say thank you for all of it. Here's a few of the things that um, you probably recognize a couple of those ladies there uh, who are diligently there on a regular basis organizing our clothing uh, room so that we have to give what it is that our clients need. Uh, this just happened on Friday night. Uh, you're probably, half of you are probably represented in some of these pictures just setting up for the, one of the most favorite meals at KCRM, I got to tell you, chili night. Uh, next one I think is... Uh, well, there's your, oh, this is, you know, this guy. Uh, there's another guy, I didn't get his picture, uh, Bob Cox, who serves on our board. You guys give and you give and you give to KCRM. It's amazing. I don't know what's next up here. Oh, you help us with the toilet paper tower, the toilet paper challenge. We give, we give a, a gift for the, we, the highest, the tallest. Oh, my goodness. We gave it to him anyway. You know, they, they worked hard. You guys worked hard. You, we, we, we were aiming at 10,000 rolls. You know how many rolls of toilet paper we ended up with this year? We had some help. This is crazy. We're going to need sound with a couple of these videos, uh, Heather, for what it's worth. So we had his help this year. He hooked us up with a, with a school or two, and they hooked us up with Price Chopper, and they hooked us up with Scott Paper Company, and instead of 10,000 rolls, which is a $6,000 line item for us, we ended up with 28,000 rolls of toilet paper. Yeah. Ever think you'd be applauding for something like that? I mean, really? Goodness. 28,000. So if you need, you know, let us know. We'll help you out. 
so, so I want to say thanks for all of that and, and the investment that you make of dollars and cents. You help us to keep this thing going. And you need to know that KCRM is a, is a, it was birthed by the Kansas City District Church of the Nazarene. And we are still vitally connected to the Church of the Nazarene. Our DS is a, a ex officio member of our board of directors. The, the executive director is, as we search for an executive director, one of the requirements is that this person, male or female, be a member in good standing of the Church of the Nazarene. So we are connected. We are you representing you downtown Kansas City. So what do we do? A few of the things that we do, well, you guys do this, uh, serve the food. You, and so some guys come to us and they're, they're, they're looking for a meal, maybe just a, a, a night's sleep, that sort of thing. And then they find out about our recovery program. And so next slide, Heather. Uh, so they can learn computer skills. Uh, they can learn, uh, oh, they can learn, isn't that an amazing floor? You could, I, could, I could do my hair in that floor, you know? It was amazing to see that. And, and that was done by the guys on our recovery program who, who invest themselves for a six month period to be in Bible study and to be doing uh, details and to be, well, here's a couple guys doing a detail. Uh, Chris, the guy on, with the Royals, well, the guy on the left with the Royals shirt on, he spent five years under a bridge. Five years under a bridge, heavy duty alcohol addiction, didn't give a rip about anything. Came to KCRM because he was so cold. It, it was a deadly winter night and he came to KCRM and he stayed with us for a bit of time, found out about our recovery program, joined it, and you know what he's doing now? Right now he's worshiping at the Church of the Resurrection downtown. He's a part of their outreach team. This is a guy that lived under a bridge. And he works at the mission as a cook, usually early mornings and weekends. The guy behind him, John, was a drug dealer, drug user, was on the brink of suicide when he stumbled into our doors, joined the program, went through all the educational uh, components of it, completed that, and his heart was changed for Christ as he went through that program and he in his heart knew that what he wanted to do for his future was to be a youth pastor. Know what he's doing today? He's three semesters away from graduating from Calvary Bible, is it still college? Calvary Bible Institute, whatever it's called right now, but he's three semesters away from graduating with a degree and he's going to be a youth pastor. That's exciting, folks. The guy, uh, back up one, if you would. This is Stanley. Stanley uh, with the cross. He is a over-the-road truck driver. Tells everybody he runs into about Jesus. Heavily involved in his church. His wife is a, uh, a pastor there. Next slide tells us about um, Henri. Uh, Henri made top grades when he went to Longview Community College studying auto mechanics. Uh, that's my car he's working on. Actually, it's Marilyn's car. Uh, but Henri now has his own, he's, a, he, he's got his own business. And he loves the Lord. He's in church every Sunday. There's another slide here that, oh, uh, this is Mike. Mike is teaching middle school over in Kansas City, Kansas. I'm sorry, North Kansas City. Teaching middle school. Uh, alcoholic. Recovering alcoholic. All of these guys are in the, pro and, and by the way, um, we're all kind of on the same path, right? I mean, we're a step away from stumbling down and, you know, bad breaks, bad choices, that's what, people, that's what puts people at our doors and bad breaks happen to all of us. Sometimes we make bad choices too. And so it's important to keep our focus on who it is that ended his life on that cross. Oh, speaking of the cross, this is Lloyd. Lloyd went through the program, heavy duty alcoholic drug user, came through the program and met, met Jesus and got excited about him. And when he graduated from the program, he wanted to go on to learn about how to do what he said he used to do. He wanted to learn how to use a computer to program it to cut things out of wood. And while he was waiting for school, he came to me and said, hey, could I, I, the cross in the chapel fell down and broke, could I make a cross for you guys? And I thought, I don't know about that. You never know what a guy, I mean, they might tell you anything, but you don't know if they're really for real. Did they really have that skill? 
So I figured a hundred bucks in a couple of weeks, why not give them a shot? So we invested a couple hundred bucks in, in the materials. That cross hangs in our chapel now, and if you've not been in our chapel, you need to go in our chapel, because that is a work of art, I gotta tell you. It's a crafts, it's, 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 that guy's a craftsman. He is now working full time as a cabinet maker here in Kansas City. Next slide. This is, this is Anthony. Anthony uh, also, <laughs> Do I have to say these guys all had drug and alcohol issues when they came to us? Their lives were falling apart, every one of them. Anthony went through the program and we needed a helper in the maintenance area and we thought we saw some potential in this guy and we hired him. Boy, he's the right hand man to our facilities and operations guy. He, he did that bench, he refinished it for us. And then I think you all know this next guy. You all know that guy? Yeah, Charlie, yeah, he was here just a little while ago and, and came to our, our, he and Rosanna and, and Thomas came to our alumni gathering. Uh, what, what a joyful moment that was. Uh, next, and Charlie has his own business, you know that. He had it while he was here and he has it now in, in Orlando, Florida. So the next slide tells, oh, this, this is Gary. Gary, uh, his wife, said, you got, you got to leave. Gary was, um, <laughs> Gary's the guy who, when he was walking up to the crack house, he walked and he, there was a guy laying on the sidewalk, a dead person, and he looked at that guy and this guy was thinking so dark and so low, he thought, he told me this later, he thought, what can I steal from that guy? Ah, somebody probably already fleeced him. And he, oh, up to the drug house he went and got his fix. And that's the kind of life he lived. His wife said, you know what? No more. We can't deal with this anymore. She would, the TV would be on the table and her purse would be there. Her purse would come up empty and the TV would disappear. It kept on happening, happening, happening. And finally she was done with it and said no more. And Gary was out in the streets. Found his way somehow to Kansas City Rescue Mission for one of those chili suppers and maybe some clothes and whatever help he could get. Incidentally, incidentally, for what it's worth, to put a guy up for the night, we have about average about 133 spaces that we can allocate on a nightly basis. I'm looking at last year, about 133 a night. And our, if you look at our annual budget, that's about 55 bucks a night a day, 24 hour day, for, for a person. One person costs us 55 bucks a day to help. Now I gotta tell you, we do better than Motel 6. Motel 6, you get a bed. You may get some other incidentals, but you get a bed. We get food, three meals a day. We get counseling. We get health services. We get chaplaincy services. We have a recovery program. We have education. You can get a high school diploma at KCRM, 55 bucks a day. That's what happens. Uh, Motel 6 says we keep the light on for you. Folks, we are the light. We are the light. We are channels of the light. You know what a conduit is? You know what that is? I looked it up. I looked it up, and what it says, this is Webster, someone or something that is used as a way of sending something, such as information or money from one place or person to another. This is a conduit. It is not a crack pipe, by, by the way. This is a conduit. It is a conduit for electrical cable. You know what else? Did I bring it with me? I think I did. You all familiar with conduit? You use them all the time. You go to a restaurant. Well, some of us don't do this anymore, but that's a straw, it's a conduit. It's a channel through which the liquid flows. We are conduits, you and me, all of us who are Christ persons. We are conduits of his grace. We are conduits of his light in our world. And whatever it is that we do, if we do it in the name of Christ, lives change, lives are impacted, things Things turn around. Transformation occurs. And so while this guy was sitting in our 
shelter, eating a chilly meal and cold, he decided he heard about our program, which is a six month, you're going to be there every day kind of thing. And you're going to go through the classes and you're going to learn about what, what it means to be a Christian. And, and so Gary said, all right, I'm going to put up with this. So he put up with it. He got onto the program. And while he was on the program, we found out, because we screen everybody and we evaluate them, and we found out that Gary didn't have a high school education. I think he was somewhere around, I don't know, fifth grade. Well, we have a high school alternative. We offer the KCRM Academy, which is a homeschool high school kind of an alternative to the GED and to a high school. Gary reluctantly, we kind of helped him, pushed him, encouraged him, He engaged with the high school and eventually got himself an official KCRM Academy diploma. And I was there the day that he graduated and we had, it was pomp and circumstance and you could hear the music playing in the background and Gary and two others marched in with the cap and gown. I mean, we had the the person who orchestrated the thing, the, the high school standing there congratulating everybody. There were four of them, the board of directors, and they all congratulated them. And Gary sat down and a message was preached and it was exciting and he got his diploma. And the next step for Gary was, well, I need to get a job. And so he went out looking for a job. And I guess he had some pretty serious forklift experience operating a forklift. And so one of the companies he went to was really interested in Gary's past and so they were interviewing him and they said well we really like what we see here Gary but uh says here you uh he's really rough I mean he grew up in the hood he I mean you sometimes you don't even understand what he means because he uses that kind of street language and maybe you know that and maybe you don't I don't know but that was Gary and so the employer was saying well it says here you got a high school diploma uh we're not too sure about that can you show us your high school diploma Gary said oh yeah (laughs) well check it out there it is my high school diploma from KCRM Academy man that was so exciting he got that job five years ago he got that job the other day I was walking into the mission early one morning and I heard a horn blow and and I turned around and there was Gary sitting in the driver's seat of a late model Honda SUV. Hey, Joe, I want to talk to you. You got a minute, of course. And we got to talking. Still has the job. Still has the job. Gary, what's going on with your life? Well, my wife was observing what happened in my life and how I changed. And she invited me to come back into the house, into the family. She invited me back. And, and, and every day, the TV's still there, Joe. And her purse still has just the way she left it. And last Christmas, I got a card. I got a, it was more like a text with a picture from Gary. Let's see the next slide. This is Gary with his wife and his daughter. They had a contest. Who could come up with the ugliest Christmas sweater? (laughs) Gary won. That's transformation, folks. And you know what? Check this out. Check this out. I got to tell you. uh, Bear with me here. Here it is. This is what I get just about every morning for the last over a year now. God bless you. Good morning. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs his arms in his arms and carries them close to his heart. Isaiah 40, 11. Father, In a world where we are sometimes threatened, we are comforted because of your gracious care for us in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. The good news is that God cares for us. Amen. Love, Gary. Every day, almost through the course of the last year and two months now, Gary has sent me a text, a devotional text from stepping over that dead guy to ministering to the minister, and it doesn't stop with me. He sends that to his family and his friends. He's an evangelist, man. He's an inner city, hardcore, hood-raised evangelist. Pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Thank you, Gary. So I want to go to the Women's Center now. If you've not been to the Women's Center, 
You know, bring your old chili supper to the Women's Center. That'll blow them away, I'll tell you that. So this is the Women's Center. It's about a mile and a half from the Men's Center. And the next slide tells you about some of the things that happened there. They're in classes. They're doing a life recovery plan. The Women's Center is a smaller organization. It's, it's only 20 beds for a, a really struggling uh, d uh, dynamic of women who are single, homeless, with co-occurring disorders, which usually boils down to drug addiction, um, alcoholism, mental illness, these ladies come with human trafficking past, rape, uh, prostitution, domestic violence, all kinds of trauma in their past. And at the Women's Center, they have a chance in a safe environment to let the dust settle and to learn, to learn about Jesus, to learn about how he can change their life, how transformation can occur. And they learn things like this. I don't know if that's is that uh, knitting or purling or what do you call that? They, they learn this kind of stuff. And, and, and also we take them outside. And, and next slide will tell you, this is our garden. This is where we did the TP Tower Challenge out in the, in the garden area. And in the garden, the ladies plant. And last year they picked all, that little thing in the girl's hand there is, is a watermelon, believe it or not. You, you usually see watermelons like this, right? That was a watermelon. Uh, sweetest thing on the planet, I got to tell you. Really cool. But this is what happens at the Women's Center, and lives are transformed there. One day about three years ago, we got a call from a lady way down in southern Missouri. Her daughter, who had been the, well, she was the homecoming queen at her high school. And after high school, a friend of hers invited her to another city and, and, and to just kind of feel her way around and see what could happen next. And what happened next was she got hooked on, Sarah, our friend, got hooked on pain pills. And that led to an addiction. And that led to mainlining heroin for this young lady, mainlining shooting dope into her veins. And for five years, Sarah lived on the streets in the gutters mainline and heroin. And when she finally came to the end of herself, she cried out to her mother. She called her mom and said, I need help. And mom said, I'm going to come and get you. And they brought her home and they began to look. They Googled help for single women and KCRM Women's Center came up. Sarah, next slide. That's Sarah in the foreground. That's her graduation day. She went through our program and you saw her life transform as well. And she became a, a coach and an encourager to the other ladies on the program. And when she finished and when she was ready to step back into the real world, if you will, mom and dad came up to celebrate with us and her, her graduation. Last Christmas, I got this in the mail. I wish I could send more, it says. I can never repay KCRM for helping my daughter Sarah overcome her heroin addiction. I've enclosed a photo of her baby boy, whom I truly believe would not exist if not for KCRM. Thanks so much, Jamie. Uh, P.S. Sarah is a little over two and a half years sober. That's exciting. She's with her husband. She's with her family. She's clean and sober and Christian to the point where we now have at the men's center, Sarah's brother, who Sarah said, Michael, you really need to get to KCRM because they can help you. So I didn't know God used Google, but he did to get Sarah to us and to get Sarah back on her feet and to get Sarah engaged in life as he wants it to be. We are the light of the world. That's what Jesus says. You're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. And we have a responsibility to be that light to whosoever, to wheresoever we see ourselves going. And God can use us, folks. He can use us. He chooses to use us. We are conduits of his grace and of his light in our world. Um, I tell you 55 bucks a day for KCRM to make its daily routine. 
And I think for what you just saw up here, what's the next slide say? Huh, something else that happens at the Women's Center. We need sound on this. That's our women's center. <laughs> Broken, hurting ladies who Jesus died for, who wanted to express themselves and what, how they valued what they received through, from him, through KCRM. And they wrote that. They wrote the lyrics. They didn't write the music. You know the music, right? But they wrote the lyrics. They wrote the lyrics. I thought that was ingenious. Got their heads together. Strangers from all around the city. It's strangers and beyond the city who come together and begin to engage in a community of broken lives and invest themselves to be transformed. And that's what happened. That was a district assembly. I don't know if any of you were at district assembly. You probably were. But, and so that, we recorded it at district assembly. Um, God is at work at KCRM. And I wanted to come today and share with you the power of God at work because of what you invest in this organization that is an extension of Knoll Avenue Church of the Nazarene, the District Church of the Nazarene, District Churches of the Nazarene. Um, and I want you to know that God is at work among us. And again, I want to thank you for clothing, food, dollars, counseling, uh, your pastors down there preaching to us in our chapel and, and teaching in our classes. And I don't know, one of those pictures I saw up there looked like he was swiping some cookies in the, in the kitchen. I wasn't sure. Maybe he was opening a can. I couldn't see the can. But you guys are invested, and, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, it's a privilege to come and share with you today, and I hope you see a, a more, more holistic picture of what happens uh, with the, whatever it is that you invest in the ministries of KCRM. Thank you so much. God bless you, Pastor.
with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to invite you to prepare uh, to receive communion today. And as we prepare to receive, I want you to think about the fact that this has been so helpful for me just to process this. Since we've had our Alcoholics Anonymous group uh, begin to meet in our building and just the more time that I spend down at, at KCRM, it, it makes me more and more aware of the fact that this journey that we are on as Christians, this journey of holiness, this call to be Christ-like, we are so very similar to our brothers and sisters who are struggling with addictions. We are, as, as sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, we are addicted to sin. And the whole process of us becoming Christ followers and, and becoming a holy people is a process of recovering from our addiction to sin. And the only way that we can do it each day is to reinvest ourselves in the one who has redeemed us. The only way we can do it is again to fall at the feet of Jesus and trust him for deliverance from sin. The only way we can do it is to again and again and again call out to our Savior Jesus and ask him to change the desires of our hearts. To change the the way that we look at the world and to change the voices that we listen to and to change the resources that shape and form us until we are remade by the Holy Spirit, until we are allowing Jesus to restore us, to restore the image of God, to, to clean off that image that was created in us. We're addicted to sin. One of the means by which we continue to be healed is to enter into means of grace like communion. Every Sunday, you are invited to come and eat at this table. And as you come and eat at this table, you are eating in the fellowship of and the company with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are invited to their table of fellowship. And every Sunday as you come and you eat at this table, you are invited into fellowship with your fellow Christ followers. With your brothers and sisters in Christ. With your fellow sin addicts. We are in recovery we are supporting one another in our recovery from sin. We are supporting one another in each day of victory. We are supporting one another as we receive grace upon grace. So today I want you to just sit with that for a minute, if you will. I want you to think about all the benefits that God has made available to us in the cross of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to think about all of the many gifts that God has made available to you today. Not just gifts of salvation, but gifts of food, gifts of shelter, gifts of fellowship, loved ones that care for you, a place of fellowship that you can come here and be supported by and to support your brothers and sisters, the accountability that is offered to you by the church and by your, by your brothers and sisters in Christ, I just want you to take a moment to be very, very thankful. Now I want you to take a moment and just have a conversation with God about the things that you need for your journey this week. What do you need to be victorious in your battle against sin this week? What do you need to be triumphant in your relationship with Jesus this week? What do you need 
to be overcomers as Christ followers this week? What provision do you need as you are led along the pathway of holiness by the Holy Spirit in the days to come? Will you have that conversation with God just now? As I pray for our meal today, I would like to invite those who are serving this morning to come to prepare to distribute the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we are so thankful today for your presence among us. We ask that you would send your Holy Spirit down upon these simple elements of bread and the fruit of the vine. We pray that you will make them for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that through this meal, you will unite us and make us one in our battle against sin, one in our journey to wholeness in your son, Jesus, one on this journey that we take as we are led by the spirit, one in our fellowship around your table today. Will you remind us, Father, as we share this meal today? Of the night that you gathered your disciples around the table The night that you were betrayed, that night that you broke the bread and you said to your disciples, this is my body broken for you. Take it and eat it. And every time you do, remember me until I come again. God, will you help us remember just now that same night that Jesus took the cup and he said to his disciples, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take it and drink it. And every time you do, remember me until I come again. God, will you help us be thankful for these precious elements that have become for us in the power of your Holy Spirit, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gifts of God for the people of God. Will you enrich us and enable us and empower us for our, work, for our walk with you this week through the reception of this meal. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you come and receive Christ's body and his blood? Receive what you need for your journey this week. Come when you're ready.
pray with me Lord we're so thankful today for the good news that we have heard we're thankful for the way that you are working Kansas City Rescue Mission we pray in the next couple of months that you would give Joe wisdom about the direction that KCRM needs to go that you'll give him wisdom and humility as he leads them into a transition father I know that he doesn't really know what's going to happen next, and he doesn't really know what's happening next for him or for KCRM. This could, be, this could be a difficult time, but I know that he covets your wisdom and your guidance, and so we pray that you will just give him a, a very clear ear and a very clear eye about your path for this place that is, that is very obviously your place. You are doing amazing work through KCRM. We're grateful for each of the counselors that work there. We're thankful for Michael and the kitchen staff. We're thankful for uh, the, the Women's Center now, Lord, and the way that you're working there and for Latia and for the work that you're doing through her. We're just grateful. We're grateful that you've provided places like KCRM for those who are deeply addicted and for those that are maybe beyond the ability of the local church to be able to help. But I also pray, Lord, that you will help us understand that each one of us, wherever we work and wherever we go to school and whoever we hang out with and even people in our neighborhoods, we are around people each day who are struggling with addiction, who are struggling with things that separate them from you and, and that make it very unclear for them what direction to take, that make life very unfulfilling and difficult and painful. I pray that you will give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to care and that you will give us a message of hope that we will be able to point our friends and our loved ones as we come across their paths and we recognize addictions and we recognize destructive behavior that we'll be able to know where to send them and how to help them help us to not just hold them at arm's length and hope that they find someone that can help them father but help us to be just as Joe has so very clearly given to us this image this morning, may we all be conduits of your grace. May we all be conduits of the light of heaven that pours forth onto a very darkened world. And may the grace that we received today, both through the word of life that we have heard and through the meal that we have shared together, may you strengthen our hands and our feet May you wisen our minds, may you, may you enlighten our eyes, and you, may you make joyful and peaceful our hearts. And may you loosen our tongues with the message of hope and joy and peace and salvation. We 
We pray these things in the power of the Spirit, in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Will you stand? You heard the man. You're conduits. Don't get plugged up this week. Make sure that you are conduits of God's grace and that everyone around you knows who God is and what he has done for you in the person of his son Jesus and the power of the Spirit. You are dismissed. Go in his grace.